Another day, another 3D printer, and this time it's the Anycubic M3 Premium. And that name is more than just window dressing. You can actually print an entire squad of miniatures on just one plate. More than that, this is one of the best quality consumer printers I have ever had the pleasure to use. If you're new here, then hi, I'm Ross, and this is Fauhammer Videos. And you know what? I need to say, I'm over it now. You know, the amount of people online calling me a shill who schleps for any cubic and Elegoo and Frozen and all of the various brands just because they send me printers. When to be honest, I'm here to tell you the truth about it. Believe me if you want, but if you don't, plenty of other videos are going to tell you the same thing. This is a premium printer. So why am I saying it's so good? Well, first of all, packaging was brilliant and it probably took me longer to peel off all the protective layers of sticker than it did to actually put the printer together and get it set up. But there is one protective sticker that you don't want to remove, and that's the screen protector that comes pre-installed on the LCD surface. But just in case you ignore this warning and the guide in the instruction manual, you also get a spare included in the box. The screws for the VAT itself are also incredibly sturdy, though it would have been nice if the VAT had actual guide holes so we could line this up with the holes in the body, because I'm constantly missing them when I'm trying to connect the two parts together. And this unit has to show up its direct competitor, the Elegoo Saturn II, by having not one, but two active carbon filters that can be used in tandem whilst the printer is in use. Just make sure you open them up and take the carbon block out of the cellophane before plugging them in, otherwise that's useless. But at any point, you can replace these after time so that you can start to filter out more and more nasty smells. And the Z-Rod here is so thick that it probably even rivals the drivetrain in my nearly 30-year-old Ford Fiesta. And whilst this is the first printer I've got that actually has wireless built in, I never actually used it because I don't know how and I like the traditional method of USB. Speaking of USB though, they do still give you a rubbishy old USB drive and the port's still on the side of the machines of any cubic printers. Though this time, it's on the side at the front. Progress, I guess. The printer itself though is huge and it's heavy. It's much more than I would expect from something equivalent of this size. And again, I'm talking about the Saturn II or the Sonic Mighty 8K. It does take up quite a bit of space on my desk and it was actually the product that made me realize it's about time to do something with my hobby room so I can actually fit things in. Oh, and a quick additional tip for anybody who's currently 3D printing. Some of these suction cups are great for going on your 3D printer lids to stop getting resin all over the actual screens. Other good features include the startup sequence, which is non-existent. There's no flashy animation. Just press the power button and a few seconds later it's on. And the auto bed leveling is really simple and straightforward. Just loosen off the screws, press home, make sure it doesn't wobble, tighten up the screws and tell it that Z equals zero. And that's it, it's ready to print. So I've actually printed with a couple of different resins for this review. First of all, I want to call out to Soraya Tech's Fast Resin, which is very, very comparable to something like Frozen's 8K resin. And the good thing about this printer is it houses so much resin that you can actually store over a bottle of it in the vat. But there is one thing I want to both praise and slate any cubic for, and that's the RERF exposure test file. This feature lets you print multiple exposures on one build plate. So essentially it speeds up your exposure time finding by eight times. But I just wish any cubic would clearly explain to us how this works. I know that there are 0.5 second increments between each exposure shown here, but when you look at the manual, the layout of numbers in the file and the layout of the numbers in the manual are completely backwards and upside down but essentially you can just put any eight individual prints in a guesstimated two by four grid on your build plate. The first item will be printed at your normal exposure time, but each of the other seven will be printed at 0.5 second increments thereafter. But because of the poor instructions, I don't know which is which. And it'd be even better if any cubic would actually provide us with a template SDL showing us these grid markings laid out. So come on any cubic, this is your standout feature. If you're gonna do this, do it properly and explain clearly and show people clearly how it works on every printer you make. And finally, with all the amazing positives this printer gives you, it also comes with NFEP, which is really good because the plate doesn't need to lift as high thanks to the newer, tougher version of this material. And considering your lift and retract speeds are actually taking up more time than your exposures, 
This is really useful on this printer, especially with a build plate of this size. Though oddly, the printer actually recommended I replace the FEP rather a lot sooner than I expected it to. I wouldn't even replace normal FET by the time this came on. So cheers printer, thanks for the warning, but I'm going to ignore you until I decide it's time to replace my FEP film. Right, printing stuff. So, as I said, you can get an entire force of models now printed on one build plate, and that's amazing. And the actual print resolution is exactly halfway between something like the Frozen Mini 8K and the Mars Pro 3. And whilst I'm comparing those printers, I've got to say, I can honestly see a visual improvement between this printer and the Mars 3 Pro, but when it comes to comparing this to the 22 micron prints on the Frozen Sonic Mini 8K, I genuinely can't see a difference. If there is one, I feel it's more of a psychological difference knowing that the numbers are different than a visual difference that I can actually make out with my own eye. Just look at these two models. Both were printed with the same Soraya Tech fast resin, one on the Sonic Mini 8K and one on the Photon Premium M3. Let me know down in the comments which you think is which. And this isn't some quiz where I'm going to reveal the answer. I want to know what you think because I can't remember, and I also can't tell. So honestly, the difference between the 28.5 microns here and the 22 microns on the Sonic Mini 8K, can you even tell the difference? Are we at that point now where, because of the resin we use and the limitations of that material itself, it's actually indistinguishable at this level of detail? Now, as a miniature painter, when I started this hobby, I honestly saw the risk to Games Workshop that many people have seen. But I don't think the risk is making copies of their miniatures. I think the biggest risk is being distracted by other things that you can paint. And the more and more I actually print, the more I want to print bigger and cooler things. But to show off the detail capable of this printer, I like to take something made for a larger scale and shrink it down to miniature size. Because when you see that the surface level textures are still visible at this scale, it genuinely makes my jaw drop that these things are even possible. As you can see from many of these models I'm showcasing here, all printed on this printer, I've once again been on a bit of an STL splurge, reaching out to creators, hoping that I could print some of the best models that I can find online. Everything from miniatures all the way up to busts and larger scale dioramas. These things are absolutely incredible. And of course, whenever I print stuff for me, I want it in the best quality available. Now, whilst I could go and print this on my Sonic Mini 8K, I genuinely found such an indistinguishable difference in quality that I would much rather reach for the Photon M3 Premium because of the convenience of that larger build plate. And all that's before all the other added benefits, such as lack of failures due to the fact that the build quality of the machine's excellent and the improved FEP. So look, I expect a lot of the people watching these videos are always asking themselves the same question. Which 3D printer do I buy? Well, to be honest, it depends what you want to print to some regard. We've got an article on Fohammer.com that's updated regularly, at least once a month, always telling people what the best printer is, specifically if they're printing miniatures. And for that article, I genuinely tend to ignore build plate size in favour of print quality and ease of use. But with these 28.5 micron printers, and I'm talking this one, the Saturn II, and the Sonic Mighty 8K, it really starts to muddy the water. Because do you really need a slightly better perceived print quality, at least on paper, when your eyes can't even see it? And is that somehow worth more to you than the convenience of a much larger build plate? So if you can answer that question and the build plate is the more important thing, then it really comes down to the difference between the three printers I just mentioned. So to make that choice, let me break it down for you. The Frozen Sonic Mighty 8K was the first to the market at this resolution, and they really need to be supported for that to some degree because consistently, recently, they've been the innovators in this field. The Saturn II is certainly the cheaper choice and will most likely be the most sold purely because of its price point. And it's worth noting that none of these three printers will necessarily provide you with better prints, they're all capable of exactly the same XY resolution. And whilst yeah, the Anycubic Photon M3 Premium is more expensive, 
I would say that that's definitely worth it for all the added features such as the carbon filters, the screen protector, the NFEP, and the overall build quality of the machine. So in summary, and to answer all those people telling me that I'm a sellout for promoting a specific product or selling it because they send me free printers, here's my honest opinion. They all do the same thing. Just pick one. By the time you get one of the other printers and get all the add-ons and upgrades in order to match its feature set to this one, you're going to be paying around the same price anyway. This just has it in one box. So that's it. Thanks everyone. And I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. If you want to take just a couple of seconds, maybe give me some feedback, drop a comment down below. What are your thoughts on printers now or 3D printers? Are we at that point of pinnacle of quality? What is holding us back? Do you agree that it's the resin now that needs to improve in order to give us even more detailed models? Or do we even need more detailed models at this stage? Anyway, that's all from me. Huge shout out and thanks to our sponsors who you can see on screen. Until I see you guys next time, Fohammer out.